Welcome to this video exploring Splunk performance improvements using Cribble Logstream. During the course of this video, we will see how a user can transform and reduce data payloads in flight in order to increase the performance of their Splunk instance. As a background to what you will be seeing in this video, I have set up a Java application that is spitting out multi-format logs. These logs include both single-line and multi-line events. Many of the single-line events contain metrics, while others contain job statuses as JSON buried inside the event and the multi-line events are the dreaded Java exceptions. In their raw format, these logs are searchable in Splunk. However, because they are missing a few key fields and they are not in proper JSON, Splunk will take a significantly longer time to search through them. What we will do with Logstream is turn the metrics into a format Splunk is expecting, including cutting down the raw data payload, unroll the Java exceptions and job statuses and format them properly, as well as truncate the job status reports. Let's dive into Logstream. On the right-hand side of the screen, I have a sample log that I captured from my Java application. This has been uploaded directly through Logstream's UI, and we will use it to view the transformations we are performing throughout the video. Currently, it is in the raw format that comes from our app, and how Logstream receives it. Every event starts with a long date, a severity, and a location. This first event is a job status event, and we can see it is reporting the job finished. These next few events are metrics events. They are showing us how the process is performing. And if we scroll down, here we have a massive Java exception. Notice how it is just one message. Nothing is categorized or in JSON format for easy searching. On the left-hand side of the screen, I have already made the pipeline that we will use to transmute and enrich the data coming from our application. A couple of these functions are mere comments that I like to insert to maintain good documentation. We all do that, right? Let's walk through the pipeline, and I will turn on each function as we discuss it to see what it does. This first group of functions are all the regular expression extractors that we use to get data out of the raw payload. This first extractor grabs a few universal fields from every event in our log, severity and thread. If we click the Expand button, we can see the regular expression in action. Notice how the two groups are labeled to be used as fields. Now, if we turn this extractor on, you can see the two new fields added to our events, thread and severity. This already helps Splunk by adding an indexed field instead of forcing it to parse the entire raw payload. The next function here pulls out the job status from any events that have a job status in their payload. Since we have two regular expressions here, I'll first expand the filter to show how it's working. Here, we are basically matching against anything with the word job in it, and once we match, that event will flow through the function. Said function pulls out the job status and type, then labels it for use as key value pairs in our transformed output. Notice that the first part is whether the job is finished or not, and the second part is the JSON that comes with it. After we turn on the function, we can see the new fields in our job status events. Here is the nested JSON of the status, and below is the type. Note that all the information is still in raw. Our next function targets the metrics events reported from our Java application. Let's look at the regular expression filter. As you can see, it grabs events that have metrics values in them. Really, anything that has response time. Then, looking at our extraction expression, we select the proper event, pull out some good information, and make key value pairs with it. Let's turn this on and see what it does. Notice the new fields we created, processing time or pool size, etc. Our last regular expression extraction deals with the Java exceptions. Here, the filter targets any event with exception in the raw field. Let's find our exception example. Here we are. Since that works, we can look at the extraction expression. Here, we have labeled the exception as root, type, and detail. These sections will get extracted and put into fields in the event. We do this so that later we can roll them back up as JSON before shipping them to Splunk. This will save us search time in Splunk 
due to allowing us to search the key values as opposed to parsing the entire event on the fly. Neat. I'll go ahead and turn this function on, and we can see the output in action. Scroll down and find our event. Look at the raw. Now let's look at the new JSON fields and values. The exception has been broken down and organized in an easy to read format for Splunk. That concludes our extraction. Now to wrap up, we need to replace the raw with our nicely formatted fields, then strip the fields away and send it all off. Our first function here is going to match our job status and our exception entries. We are going to use this to remove the timestamps since we have added a time field to the event already. Let's turn this on and see the timestamp get removed on the right in our data preview. Notice how the event starts with the job status rather than the time. Next, we are going to target all of our exception events. Since we target a field that gets created in post, however, we won't see the filter catch anything, so instead I'll just turn on the function, and we can see the output. A nicely JSON organized exception event put back into the raw field. Much cleaner from a Splunk perspective. Notice the exception stack fields we added are still there. This is where our next function comes in, to clean up those fields we made while organizing the data. We target the same Java exceptions and remove all the exception fields created now that they've been put back into raw. Our last raw manipulation will target the job status events. Again, since we filter based on a field newly created, the filter doesn't show us it will catch anything. Let's turn it on and see the results. We have taken the job status out of the raw field since we have a new job status field showing the same information. Now we get into the end game. Our next function publishes the metrics events as metrics for Splunk. To do this, we look at the newly made fields containing processing times and pool sizes and label them as metrics. You'll see the difference when we enable this function. Now the metrics have the little M next to the event number to indicate that they have been transformed into metrics proper. Now that everything has been taken apart, cleaned up, and put back together, we need to add a few indexing and source fields for Splunk to utilize. This ultimately makes things easier to organize and find. Notice that enabling this function adds two new fields, index and source type. Last little bit before we close out this pipeline, remove the rest of the raw payload from the metrics events. We took all the useful bits out and gave them their own fields. Leaving the raw field would just be duplicate data. This last function does just that, removes the rest of the metrics raw field. Now if we look at our quick stats for the events in our log, you can see we didn't change the size of anything too much, but we added some fields and reorganized the raw payloads. This significantly improves Splunk performance in the long run, because now Splunk won't have to spend as long searching for things in raw or trying to parse ugly non-JSON data. Thank you for watching this video discussing how to use Cribble Logstream to transform, organize, and enrich your data in flight as a tool for increasing your Splunk performance.